What's, what's up? How you doing? It's me back again, Analog Attack. Jim Martin's here by popular demand. How you doing, Jim? All right, Mike. Thanks for having me, man. Thanks for coming on, man. Let's uh, do a campai. Cheers, my friend. Can you? <laughs> Here's to your good health. <laughs> yeah, cheers. What are you drinking? Guinness. Oh, classic. Got one of these, oh, it says Japanese wheat beer. Good beer. It's got a reindeer on it. You can't lose. It's beautiful. It's tasty. Ever been to Japan, Jim? Yes. In 2010. Yeah. You have a yeah. good time? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I was there for about a week and a half and uh, I did soup the nuts. You know, it was uh, gigs, professional life, mm. tourist life. Um, Met many, many people. Yeah. I felt dizzy when I got on the play home. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, DSB, right? You're over with. Yeah. yeah. For their last gig. Last ever gig. Yeah, I think. Uh, what, uh, Antinoch. Great place. Antinoch. And uh, everybody was super nice to me and, uh, you know, wanted to meet me. You know, who's who's that foreigner? <laughs> and uh, uh, drinking was had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Do you remember who played that gig? Was it a big line of oh, bands or like? Um, well, band. DSB, of course. Yeah. Um, uh, Crow played. Ooh, nice. Uh, uh, I remember uh, Extinct Government played. Yeah. Um, Creek Shog. Cool. Um, and I'll have to look up the others because mm. it was that long ago. Yeah. But uh, and I was drinking a lot. <laughs> but it was a really nice club. Good sound, right? Yeah, excellent sound. Yeah. And they even let me videotape. I started videotaping oh. in there. They got bad, but then they were like, "Only for you and your friends." I was like, "Okay, no problem." <laughs> and I still haven't shown that video for respect. <laughs> yeah, I've seen a lot of that happen where. <clears throat> A Western guy will be take out his camera and you know get it knocked out of his hand or pushed out the way. Or, well, you know. I'm a pretty big dude. I think they were kind of scared of me. But <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, drink I had a nice friend who explained it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Did you drink like a whale after the? Yes. After yes. The yes. I was told I could drink like a whale. <laughs> And I put up with all their silly drinking games. And it was probably one of the first countries where I, I went to where you could uh, have somebody come and open a bar at four o'clock in the morning by appointment for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Uh. It's like, it looks close. Oh, no, no, he's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Shows up on a bicycle, unlocks everything, and starts pouring drinks, <laughs> turns on the lights. <laughs> Amazing. Well, I'd like to see you back Osaka next time, I reckon. You'll, you'll Will do. Osaka. Will do. Yeah. It's on All my right. hit list. Yeah, great town, great town. All right, Jim, we've got many things to talk about. So maybe right. let's, let's take it back to the beginning. 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 I am from beginning. New Haven, Connecticut, right. which is like an hour away from New York City. So I grew up, I'm in my mid-50s now. Yeah. So I was an early hardcore kid and uh, fortunate to see a lot of great bands coming up. And and um, a lot of you know being so close to New York, mm. a lot of a lot of crucial bands came through here at that time from all over the place. Mm. Um, but the local bands that we had back then in Connecticut um, were Vatican Commandos. Oh damn! Yeah. Well, with a Moby playing in there. Yeah, you saw Moby them? used to work the door of the club we used to go to, the oh. Anthrax Club, the original Anthrax Club. Um, and uh, they were from like uh, Stanford, Norwalk mm. area. Connecticut's very small. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, another, this is a very uh, good, noteworthy band. Um, it's a good record. Did you, you see them? This. Did you see them a bunch of times? Did you see the Vatican Commandos? Oh, yeah, Vatican Commandos, yeah. absolutely. Oh. Yeah, they used to have this poet come on the stage. His name was Dirty Ernie. And uh, they had him on the 12 inch. He did oh, some awesome. poems on the 12 inch, if you ever catch up to that. Oh, cool. Yeah, here's, this one's, uh, well, that. Vatican Commandos is legendary, but this is mm. quite legend too. CIA. That's a good one. They're from, they're from Bridgeport. Mm. And there's like a cross-pollination in, in the Connecticut music history of CIA. Mm. Reflex from pain. Yeah. 
which had Ray Capo singing for them before he was in Violent Children. Oh. Violent Children. Wow. And then uh, John Purcell, or Purcelli, uh, was in the Young Republicans. That's one I've never heard of, Young Republicans. Yeah, it, it was all demos for a long time. This mm. got pressed about 10 years ago. Right. I did the artwork on that. You did that? Wow. Yeah, I did the artwork. Cool. Well, that's we're gonna we're gonna lead to that. That's all right. So I used to do. I had no money when I was a kid, and mm. so it being DIY, um, you know the the club would let you go. I used to say I could draw, and they were like, "Oh, draw some flyers." And I was drawing a lot of flyers. Mm. And I got known for my art doing the flyers, and it. it I'll, I'll get to some other stuff that I parlayed into, mm. but uh, um, another another Connecticut band that was very influential to me not on a great scale like those other bands but yeah. they're very very awesome people is seizure seizure yes yeah and yeah, yeah. uh i did art for them later but these guys were like my brothers one, one of them was my roommate he just passed away recently but they really turned me on to like international hardcore mm. and they already had their you know they pointed me in the right direction yeah and uh opened a opened a lot of interesting sounds to me a way you know you know everybody has somewhere to start but this was mm. a very influential record to me and very great friends mm. and uh, i'm still in touch with most of them and uh, like i said though the bass player john who was like the guru one of the early trading guys i knew who who like showed me how to trade records and mm. and uh you know, plus he, he was, he wasn't really, uh, he, he came from uh, Europe. He moved from Europe with his family to the New York area when he was a kid. He grew up in Argentina part of the time. So he was very exotic, <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> yeah. but he, he, but he traveled a lot. So he always came back with tons of punk records from wherever uh -huh. he was, like in France or wherever, you know, Belgium. Mm. Uh, another thrashy outfit back in those days was Youth Corps. Oh yeah. Yeah. This is from New London. Um, like on par with like siege mm, yeah like and but this you know this is from 82 you know uh ed felch he uh the guy uh who, from this band he he uh he had the maximum rock and roll radio show here that you, he would carry that and he was a dj at a college radio station man you and, had a lot going on in your little area there so many good yeah like i said but it's you know the northeast of the usa geographically mm. you know we're we're packed in so like on one end, it's like Providence and Boston, mm. you know, we're in like, we're in the in-between. And then the other side is New York city, mm. you know, <laughs> it's right. like, you right. know, it's, it's only a few counties. It's a very small state. Mm. Um, so that all that, like I said, parlayed to youth of today, yeah. which was originally a Connecticut band, but uh, um, they, their first appearance was on Connecticut fun. Mm. And I drew that. This is the first record cover I ever did. And 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 Damn. like I said, I can do so much better now. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but uh, but but all these bands are on there, including them. But soon after this was released, they changed. They just went down to the city. You know, okay. it's just like they were getting big anyway. So it was just like right. it was. A, I think it was a logical choice for them. Jim, but, who's on that comp? That compilation. On this comp, uh, CIA, mm. Rude Awakening, mm. Lost Generation, No Milk on Tuesday. Oh God. <laughs> Yeah, Youth of Today, 76% uh, uncertain. Oh, yeah. Um, some bands, uh, like this band was from New Haven, Fatal Vision. Mm. This is like their only appearance ever. They turned into the Revelation band Slipknot, not okay. the big Slipknot. That first seven inch is amazing, the Slipknot. Yeah, but this this is pre-Slipknot, pre Fatal Slipknot. Vision. Mm. Uh, end product, Contraband, Vatican Commandos, Seizure, Ooh. and Bad Attitude. Wow. And, uh, but uh, this, th you know, you know regional comps were a thing back then yeah. you know there'd be like the ohio midwest comp yeah. you know there'd be you know the oklahoma comp you know yeah. so this, this was the connecticut one that's kind of, what labels that on jim incas 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 who also did uh lost generation okay and vatican commandos all right and cia mm. and they were out of bridgeport and they had some offshoots with hr from the bad brains because oh. the bad brains used to come up and hang out and play and and uh when they were a bit smaller <laughs> but uh but they were good friends with joe diaz who ran the incas label wow. so it, it, a lot of it, you know 
as a teenager, this was all fantastic. You know, it's, I mean, like, it's still fantastic now. I mean, all, all, a lot of those records are, are classics. Um, yeah, here's the uh, 76 LP. This is the first one. And, the, you know, and some of the songs are like retreaded from CIA okay. and uh, Reflex from Pain. But uh, these guys are still around. I'm still in touch really? with them. Um, like I said, all these guys are a bit older than me, but they they always included you. They never said, right. hey, kid, like, hey, little kid, get out of here. It was like, hey, kid, come with us. Hey, kid, oh. come into the show. That was really important then. Mm. And, uh, and then, you know, I started hanging out down towards New York. Oh, here's another band. Mm. Um, really, really great guys. And these are, this is a classic too. They hung out a lot in Connecticut, but uh, AOD. I've got that. That's one I've yeah. got. Yeah, well, this is like, yeah, that. that's it. Killer. Killer. That's it. Yeah. Classic record. Yeah, yeah. You know, but uh, Bruce, Bruce Wingate, good buddy. Mm. Um, just fantastic guys. Like I said, like, they're like a year or two, you know, several years older than me. They were just like like big brothers, big cousins kind of thing. Like, hey, kids, come on, let's go, let's have fun, you know. It's like, but uh, so then I started hanging out in New York more. Mm. So um, these kind of records, uh, the big city records, like I never had all the savages, but this is a, this is a, a really influential at the time, and and like they included a lot of Connecticut bands on there. Um, Remind us who's on that one, Jim. Also, they've got a New yeah. York side and a Connecticut side, right? Uh, pretty much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. On this one, on the Nice and Loud. Nice and Loud. Yeah, but this is a compilation of the three. I see. Of their seven inches, but okay. uh, I never had the original ones. But right. they, they released this because I think they were in short numbers. Yeah. You know? oh, yeah. So, but this is from the '80s as well. I love the way those like old, that kind of like just stark black and white. I love that. A lot of well, those yeah, old cops like, have that. That look this, about this them. Is, this is from Big City too. Okay. And this this oh, was that, a yeah. Good one. Yeah. This is a, this so was good. a big deal back in the day, and uh, I saw a lot of those bands, and uh, you know, so you know, like Psychos, Creed Cop, um, you know, the, some of the lesser known mm. uh, New York hardcore bands that that were like OG. You know, well, they're to totally original guys. Uh, Javi, Javi and the Bastards, they uh, they were kind of like a, a revamped Dead Boys, but Javi was the guy who ran Big City Records. Okay, oh. out of the Bronx, and uh, so you know, and then like he did, he, I think one of the last things he did like the Mob, like the New York Mob, not the UK Mob. Yeah, and um, and he did uh, he did a Ur Urban Waste mm. uh, reissue twelve inch, um because the seven inch just sold out so fast so yeah but back then so wow. so there was this one show tying all these bands together mm. um there was this one show we booked at yale and yale didn't really do you know yale's kind of an ivy league <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah which people you know cambridge yeah. oxford yale harvard you know yeah. top 10 school you know yeah. and and so they somebody had access to this like student union type deal mm. and and so we said we're going to put a show on and and we really wanted to see agnostic front and this is the early days of agnostic uh. front and they came up with the psychos and i remember i'd seen them in new york but i never saw them up you know like you know it was like starting to interact with these people and when they showed up the to town, the van, it looked like something out of Bronx Warriors 1990. It, they showed up in this gra graffiti strewn van that was scorched. And they all jumped out of the van with these huge chains, like chains, you know, like thick gauge, like almost like maritime chains, like for anchor ways. And they, they all had them around their waist. So it was like, and then I was like, man, I ain't messing with those guys. But they were the nicest guys. And at the end of the payday, that, that payout, they made sure everybody had like a percentage and mm. they were kind of like showing us the rules, you know, like okay, gotcha. make sure that you, you give the bands the mm. higher percentage. Mm. You know, it's like, you know, we were just getting into booking shows mm. and, and they were very honest about like, well, we came the furthest yeah. and the psychos yeah. came with us. So we'll right. get the higher percentage, but everybody gets a piece of this. Right. And they made sure cool. nobody walked away with nothing. Damn. So, you know, cool. I think it was like in the spirit of like the BYO days, you know, mm, mm. and and uh, but but, uh, you know, Agnostic Front's a band that I've come 
in and out like yeah. and they've always been there and they were always mm. you know you know love them or hate them you know i know a lot of crusties are sighing but uh <laughs> but uh uh they they were very instrumental there would be nothing without them as far as that they were very supportive of everything that's cool to know so i i can honestly <laughs> say that and like fast forward a bit when i was mm. dealing with nausea we'll get to that yeah like roger was very helpful he was super helpful but uh cool. it, this is that uh, the psychos never had a uh uh official release back in the days this came mm. out on radio rahim a couple years okay. ago yeah but uh but that's you know it's like it's also like these songs got passed around too like like you hear like trip six you ever hear Ooh. trip six yeah and they they turn into rejuvenate and like tommy rat like the lesser known mm. new york hardcore bands but i always said like tommy rat and trip six and all that stuff was like just that's new york hardcore the way i like it nice and dirty you know <laughs> they, you know i didn't like the clean stuff you know uh, <laughs> like, which which brings me to nice and dirty <laughs> these guys were awesome mental abuse oh god yes yes and yes. uh and i saw them so many times they were such characters they were the extreme opposite of straight edge right. but they weren't like douchebags you know and and uh i remember uh uh hanging out with them like sid sludge the singer was he, he, he seemed crazy but you know i think he had a learning disability or something mm. he's still around people say oh he's dead now I mean, he's actually alive his name is chris something or other but uh he is the nicest guy ever but he had a reputation for sneaking into like every show and i remember uh me and sex bob from caesar he had a, a zine called dumpster dive mm. and we interviewed mental abuse and Sex Bob goes, I have the tape. You know, we used to tape the interviews and then hmm. transcribe them. And uh, and and uh, uh, Sid Sledge, he asked Sid Sledge, he goes, so tell us some of your sneaky ways of uh, how you get into this. He goes, he goes, he has this accent. From, he's from New Jersey. He goes, I have so many ways. Like Houdini. Was like, I was like, is he, what the fuck is he on, man? I couldn't figure out. I was like, he was on some kind of weird drug. But like highly highly entertaining band he used to come out on he was like this really rough and tumble skinhead type but he came out like wearing a dracula cape you know like <laughs> shit like that you know <laughs> just off the you know there's there's live recordings I, if you if you're not familiar with them i highly suggest it you can oh. find the them playing on uh wmyu I, i've seen that stuff on the web mm. really really funny stuff so all that mm. stuff leads to um the more international stuff, like I was telling you with John right. from Seizure. And um, there was a guy here. I don't know what happened to him. I haven't heard from him in 30 years or more. Mm. His name was Carl Eder. Yeah. And he had a radio show here, local radio show. And he played, he was, he was an active trader. And he was bringing noises to us from Sweden. He was bringing mm. like the anti cymex I mean, we already knew about Discharge and oh, all the British funny. bands and stuff around here. But he was bring he 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 was the first guy that I heard bringing in Japanese around here, and this is like 1984, 85. Right. And he was playing it on the show. Like I heard Gauze, I heard Gizm, I heard all those Japanese oh. classics on his radio show. I'm like, God, I've listened to it. You know, meanwhile, my friends and I are listening to the Misfits, and I hear that. I'm like, what the hell is that? It's crazy. It's different. And and oh, uh, and and uh, and and he he had a zine, and he wrote wrote the zine. I I I can only find this issue Ooh. of it. I have. I have boxes of zines. As yeah. a matter of fact, uh, you know, uh, Welly Arcor? I do. You know, Welly? Yeah. Yes. Welly had me digging around looking for something he's working on. He goes, uh -huh. he, he, I probably had something he was looking for. And I was uh -huh. like, and then that guy, uh, Chris Minacucci. Coochie. Uh, Coochie. Radio, Coochie. Yeah. He was, and then he called, I was like, what am I, the archive? <laughs> but I was like, <laughs> but I was like, I was like, but they also made me realize that you made me realize, asked uh -huh. me to do this interview. Like, my shit is way out of order. I got to get this all back into order. Like boxes of stuff. I'm like thumbing through it and going down memory lane. But but going cool, back cool. to Carl Eder. Yeah. This was his zine, Over the Top. Over the Top. Thrush, yes. Over the Top. Thrush. That's familiar to me. That yeah, means. and he had a label. He had a label. But like, I mean, if you look at it, look, Sacrilege. Oh, this is yeah. From, this one, this issue's from 85, 60, issue three. And there's all kinds of great reviews in here. Um poison ideas in in here you know this is this was great and then he so he had this label and uh he put out this international comp called apathy never that's great i had i bought that too 
when it came out. Yeah, yeah. He, put, he put this out, and uh, and you know, and it had uh, you know, it has uh, uh, depression from Australia. You know, uh, that was just... another thing that was popular at the time hmm. was was the international comps. You yes. know, in in the eighties, and that's when you started hearing it. You know, we didn't have the internet, so right. <laughs> yeah. So the comps were important, and uh, but like at at his house, what did I do with that? Oh. <laughs> he had the craziest distro like you go to his house i remember i bought disorder under the scalpel blade mm. from him right and you know and i had perdition you know and i was uh, like oh yeah i couldn't find that record anywhere and he goes oh i got it come by my house i went and he had a room and it was it was full of japanese punk and wow. and and uh he had some italian stuff and and but he sold me this under the scalp i didn't pull that record out but oh, there's no. there's all these fan letters in it to taff and they're the funniest thing. Like they like they made their own stationery, uh, the disorder stationery. I didn't pull it. Shit. That's but, okay. uh, but uh, you know, but the cartoon they made cartoons of themselves yeah. and their their drill bit bullet belts and all this yeah. stuff. And it was it was really funny. But Carl had all that stuff. So uh, and cool. so, but th this is a, a holy grail thing that I got from him in one of those trips, the punks cassette Ooh. with the book. And he had about ten of these in his house when I went over there. <laughs> I'm I'm wondering like where are you where he was getting this stuff from because it was he had some trading partner over there. Yeah, but uh, but you know this this got a beautiful book in there. This and I was like you know people were like where the hell did you get that? I was like from Carl Etter, you know, <laughs> way before eBay or any yeah, of that yeah, stuff. Yeah. You know? But uh, but you know so you know. Carl had us coming by the house. We were buying all kinds of stuff. He also put out um, this uh, War 7-inch compilation, mm. which has Prong, Radis, Sorted Doctrine, Capital Scum from Belgium. Belgium yeah. I think they were from Belgium. From, that, have you got the LP? It's amazing. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. But like he was introduced to me stuff like Heibel yeah. and uh, all that stuff. But uh, WDM, they were from Finland. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Prong and Ratus. Yeah, Radis is on comp. here. Yeah. yeah, Radis is on here. So, you know, he, he was tapped into it. So, you know, I was doing a lot of... Oh, he also put this out. Uh, Sons of Ishmael. I re-bought that just last month. Yeah, it's great. And he also put out a Rape Teenagers 12-inch. Oh, the, man, I love that band. Yeah, and uh, and they turned into... Who did they turn into? Puss Rod. Yes. Did you ever hear that stuff like from like 10 years ago? Plus, I've not like, really heard it. I didn't know fast. that it was X Rape Teenage. I love Rape Teenage. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very manic and fast. Yeah. Melo and, melodic. Uh, mm. But then, so, so Carl comes to me, you know, we're hanging out, getting to know him well. You know, he's a few years older than me. You know, and, you know, now I'm thinking he's the guru, man. He's got all this <laughs> great stuff, you know. And uh, he said, Jim, I know you do artwork. Mm. I need some art for an upcoming project. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, it's a band called Christ on a Crutch. Oh, and I was yeah. like, you know, but he goes, he says, I said, when do you need the artwork by? And he goes, tomorrow. Because <laughs> <laughs> I guess he had another artist lined up for it. This guy from Australia, uh, he had him on uh, some other, mm. uh, Tim Dognest was from Australia. Mm. And, uh, and, and I said, well, I don't know anything about the band. I have no connection mm. to them. I don't know what they want. You know, you know. He, it, you know, th none of this and that. So here it is. I did it. It's it's, it's like real brightly yeah. colored. I didn't color it. He did. I did the black and white. Right. But but years later, I met Christ on a crutch at ABC No Rio in New York. And they said, oh, yeah, we hated that cover. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody, and I get compliments all the time. Oh, you did the Christ on the crutch. I'm like, yeah, I did that. I did that in a day. Yeah. Oh, they 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 hated it. They hated it. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever, you know. But I was just so funny. He goes, I need to buy tomorrow. So I went home and made a big pot of coffee and just stayed up all night drawing. That. <laughs> um. So um, jumping in mm. ahead. Um. I uh. I got, you know, being friends with uh, Ray Capo and all those guys, mm. um, they started asking me to do artwork, too. And right. uh, they were starting up a label. Well, Utete was getting big. Mm. Utete's first seven inch was on uh, Positive Force, seven seconds label. Oh, yeah. And uh, and and uh, so they asked me, listen, I already knew the guys from Warzone from hanging around in New York City. They said, we're going to do a Warzone seven inch. It's going to be the first 
they didn't oh here's the thing they didn't they didn't have a name of the label yet oh so they said they were gonna call the label schism like at yeah. first right mm, mm. and so they said they had me draw up all this stuff for war zone right i did this wow. and i gave i remember i showed them a sheet i don't have the glare i can't oh, tell. No, it's, it's okay yeah but uh uh i gave them a sheet of different fonts and I remember when I saw this come out, I never knew which one they picked. They picked that one. I went, it's the worst one. <laughs> <laughs> but I got to tell you, like, Ray Bees and Todd Youth were the nicest mm. guys ever, man. And uh, they always, it, like, you could tell Ray had, like, some, you know, Ital his, his real name was Ray Barbieri. Mm. But you could tell he came from a big Italian family. He's like, he goes, oh, Jim, you're an honorary Warzone member. You're a Warzone family. I was like, just don't make me a Warzone girl, but a uh, woman or whatever. But uh, they were the nicest guys. Like, and, and we were friends for, forever until mm. he passed. And, uh, right. but, uh, but the, so they put this out and they decided not to go with uh, Schism Records. They wanted to call it Revelation. And they said, we're not going to use your labels. And I was like, ah, oh, they knew oh. I spent a lot of time on it. Mm -hmm. So they put this flyer. This was the one I wanted Warzone to use. <laughs> but, but then here, they put this flyer in the first edition. Oh. And, and it, that's the original artwork for the Schism labels. Oh, that wow. And, and, and uh, but it was just so funny. They, they they thought I'd be so mad that they stuffed all the original copies of this one. Jim Martin did the original art. You know, it's like, oh, thanks, guys. Yeah, <laughs> cool. yeah. you know, they were the nicest guys. Man. Oh. And, uh, but then, uh, you know, this this record's legend, you know? So, yeah. it, you know, I'm glad I'm a part of the story, I guess. But uh, uh, so anyway, the other thing I did, and this was a controversial uh, Revelation release because mm. these guys who I went to school with mm. were not straight edge. I can assure you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, and they asked me to do the lettering and mm. stuff inside the liner notes and stuff. Mm. So, but uh, you know, there was another webcast that these guys down south somewhere were asking me, "Can you track down these guys?" And I'm like, "Oh yeah, they're still around here. They're not into hardcore or anything uh. anymore." Like, you know, one's clean and sober, he's got kids and, you know, more power to you. And yeah. uh, this, what, this guy's a, a big realtor, his face is all over town. Like, you know, Mike Martinez, realty, you know, <laughs> and uh, he's a chef yeah. now. So, but uh, they, but, they only did that one seven inch, right? That's it. But yeah. these, these, the, part of these guys were the, the fatal vision thing that I mentioned on the mm -hmm. Connecticut one. Mm -hmm. Also, this guy, uh, Scott Augustinelli, mm -hmm. he was a drummer in my band, my first band, Malachi Crunch. Oh, I didn't uh, know you were in Malachi Crunch. Right? Yeah, oh. I was in Malachi Crunch. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, so we played together for a bunch of years mm -hmm. doing that. And uh, and then another thing on Revelation mm -hmm. uh, was I did work on this too. Am I glaring? Yeah, he, brought, he pulled it out. Put it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's tag them. There you go. <laughs> All right. Yours looks a little bit different. I, I guess there's a lot of different pressings of this, right? This is the first press because I remember when they came out, they said, "Here you go, Jim." <laughs> how, 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 how would you? How do you know? Is there any like? What? I don't know. What do you? There's no, on yours? there's no barcode on mine or anything. No, there's no barcode. You no. Remember? Well, this one's a, this barcode's a sticker. Right. You know, that's probably for the distro. You know, yeah, the yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. Trip six are on this too, right? You're just yeah, yeah. Nausea's on there. Yeah. But but uh, um, the band is on there. Um, Youth Defense League, very controversial band. Yeah. Because, because uh, you know, so it was like, I remember that was a big controversy that Nausea and, and them were on there. But it was the New York seed. It, the, you know did they compromise i don't know why they went on it mm. um we never really talked about it but but uh i just remember like the scuttlebutt in the scene back then was like uh you know there was a lot of skinheads in new york city then mm. there was a lot of dodgy ones right. and uh and some of them went that way and but i but so when i people ask me about that record i said well it's called the way it is because it was the way it was okay you, you know was that, it, there was that yeah. picture that kind of surfaced recently and it's it's got one of the guys from yeah, it's uh, Neil and, and Nick. Yes, yeah. that picture. And everyone was like, really... Uh, Drinking a beer. <laughs> yeah, what's going on in this picture? <laughs> well, I mean, it was just the scene. Um, I mean, you, yeah. you ran into each other in the park, you know. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, back in the 80s, as probably most of the people who were watching this know, there was a huge bad 
that's when the fascist skinhead problem really became a problem in America. Right. Okay, and, yeah. and uh, um, so that's like when the sharps, I, I soon after that, I was when sharp started up, you know, cause it was quite a big skinhead scene. I remember even traveling to visit a friend, uh, in Chicago who was going to school and I was like, oh, all right, I'll hang out in Chicago. I never hung out in Chicago before. And there was, there was a gang of Nazi skinheads out there. This was eighties, like 87, 88. Mm. Yeah. And then I remember there was a black Nazi skinhead band or a skinhead gang called the bomber boys. And, and I remember they, they you know, but I was, I remember I was hanging out with the bomber boys cause I'm not a racist, <laughs> but, but the, the bomber boys though were hooligans for sure. You know, they, I, I walked through a restaurant one of those guys, I went to take a piss. I came back out and he was like flipping tables over and giving everybody the finger, you know, with food flying everywhere. <laughs> I was like, Oh, I think we're going to leave. <laughs> yeah, we had that in England too, you know? Oh, I, I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, what was it? Uh, one time, uh, uh, I was in England and a friend showed me the video of a. Uh, uh, it was a documentary on the BBC and it was about uh, Nikki Crane. Yeah. Of yeah. of uh, on the strength through oi uh, cover, I, and I was with my wife. My wife was with me, and, uh, and he showed me this video. And he came out gay, and it was yeah. this backlash. But it was yeah. on. It was like this documentary on the BBC, and they interviewed him. Everything. The very next day, we were in London, walking down the street. And who comes walking in front of us with a baby stroller? Nikki Crane. What? Right? And, yeah. And, and he was pushing a baby in a stroller. And, and I looked at, he was looking at me and I looked at him and I was like, are you Nikki Crane? I went, hey, Keith, my friend, my British friend. I, when I went to look for him over my shoulder, he was already across the street. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, don't fuck with those guys. He was like. <laughs> Jim, we glossed over this a little bit. Did, did you? did the artwork for this right no mm -hmm. no no i did some stuff on the insert okay no, i'm sorry but, but, just but, over but, uh, mm. no but but the artwork on this going back to this mm. um did yours come with the booklet it's got the booklet in there it's just got this double sided oh, no. insert oh no this one has a booklet ah See? that's why my copy was so cheap yeah no but it, it comes with a booklet right and it, like here's a sh there's a sheet right here mm. it's probably what you have yeah but uh you know there's but there's all all the bands work and stuff in here and there's the, there's the war zone stuff i did so okay yeah. yeah so i got included in on there but this this was like a breakthrough as far as like computer art mm. on records like like a cleaner look right. you know not hand drawn and i remember that was like one of the first records i saw that looked so clean yeah, yeah, but it's nice though, you know. It's like it is yeah. clean, but it's tasteful. But what I did, I when I was with Revelation Jordan, go back to Revelation, away from mm. Nazi Nick. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh, Jordan was my roommate. Wow. And and who ran Revelation? Mm. He still runs Revelation in California. Mm. And uh, he, but my other roommate was John from Seizure. Yeah. And and I had this other roommate, uh, Paul. And I had uh, two brothers, these two Irish brothers. They uh, they, and they were punks, mm. and they were they they had moved to the states or something from. They were squatting in London and then came to to the states. But uh, so we all lived there. We used to sit around. Here's a dirty secret. We used to do the busy work and stuff records and everything, like when we were watching TV or listening to the tunes, smoking bog heads. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, just you know, because he would Jordan would like ask us and he'd pay us and you know. That was yeah. funny. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, different times. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but you know, we didn't work like let's get some pot and stuff, straight edge records. <laughs> You know, you just like, hey, I need a hand with these. Can you guys help me? And we would just all sit there, sure. You know, it's like... <laughs> cool. Oh, so where do we move from here? Oh, so after hmm. the rep, you know, you know, New York, Connecticut, New Jersey, moving around. Yeah. And like, I, you know, I saw Reagan Youth a bunch of times, all the classics. They're and, one of and, my favorite uh, bands ever from New York. I love that band. Well, uh, Vic Dominicus. Hmm. Uh, who ended up in nausea he was in reagan youth mm -hmm. and uh and i remember uh, fast forward a bit on tour we were in germany and the rest of the band went somewhere after a gig and uh and and passed out and i, I remember me and vic were the only ones who want to stay up and go have a few more drinks and we ended up in some punk squat and they're like oh americans are here <laughs> you know and uh 
and 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 then Reagan Hughes came on the jukebox and like and one of them got in our face he goes if you want American punk rock you need to hear punk rock like this and I said well I'd like to introduce you to the bass player of fucking Reagan you asshole the next thing you know I was like prost and all the beers are coming at us it's like oh we're so sorry <laughs> eat that crow <laughs> but uh that's I was talking to Lou from Sick of All like last year and he was saying how they were one of his favorite bands from New York and how they used to do like Black Sabbath covers and like Led Oh, they go on and on. They would get up. I think I think Dave did it to piss people off. Oh. And, and you know, like it's happy outside. I'm a hippie now. And <laughs> you know, the clouds are floating through me. It's like, and all these punks are like, where's Go Nowhere? I want to hear Go Nowhere. <laughs> you know, and that's and also when they were starting to go that way. Mm that's when the scene was becoming more militant and there was a lot of Nazis hanging around. Right. And I think, you know, he was just like probably fed up, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and, you know, unfortunately he passed away. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know that story, but, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you know, I wasn't great friends with him or anything, but I did okay. get to know Victor, but I remember Reagan used was booked to play the anthrax and um, they weren't, I remember, uh, the, the show was going off, you know, like New York from where the anthrax was, eh, it's about 45 minute drive into Manhattan with traffic. And, uh, and, and uh, I heard, I was there early at the club and the club owner, uh, Sean Sheridan was on the phone with somebody like, yo, you guys have obligated to play. You need to be here. We got back line. Just get on the train. We're near the train stop. You know, this, and, and this, and, and finally I, I heard him muttering and swearing and he had to go get him and pick him up he had a station wagon he went down to pick him up and they came back and they i know why they were so out of it they were high as fuck i mean like spaced out weed or tripping or something then when they got out of the car they were like oh i was like <laughs> they were so fucked up and sean sheridan went down there he's like you obligated to play the show you're gonna fucking play the show he went and picked them up brought him into the club <laughs> and it ended up it was a good show <laughs> they snapped out of it <laughs> Damn. What but, a band. Uh, they had dropped off. Like that volume two is like nowhere near as good as the volume one. Yeah, the intensity of the first one. It dropped. There's, there was a recent reissue hmm. of outtakes and stuff that's pretty good. I think it's on, uh, I, I don't have a hand. Is that like it's, was it? It's a lovely day for a matinee or something like that? Something it's, like that. It's, okay. it's, it's on uh, Puke and Vomit out of California. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah it's, it's pretty good. I was yeah. listening to it. It's, it's pretty good. Hmm. You know, it's that era. It's the earlier era. Cool. So. so good. All those yeah. songs, man. Anthems. But, but uh, so, so fast forward, like, mm. uh, you know, Vic joined Nausea. And, uh, and, and, uh, you know, we, I used to go to all the shows uh, in New York and see Nausea all the time. Even Neil, the original singer, Neil Robinson, mm. who he was from England, uh, oh, lived yeah. in New York. Uh, he was the original singer. He started up Tribal War Records after yeah. he left Nausea. And he had one of the more important distros in the 90s in New York mm. City. Like, if you found, you know, like the record stores didn't even have what Neil had, you know. And oh. and Neil was doing really well with that. And he was t he was dealing with, uh, you know, the networks were getting better mm. with Europe. Like, uh, that guy Kleister at Skold. Skold. He, and, he passed yeah. away. Also. Yeah, he passed away. Um, but I, I just remember, like, Neil was beefing it up. I was like, and then you go to his house in Brooklyn, mm. and like if if it wasn't a gig and you just wanted to go to his house, he'd let you in to buy stuff. You know, it's like you know, and he, he had tribal war. We used to call him the tribal warlord. You know, like, <laughs> but no, but you know, he got clean and sober, and and he just wasn't into uh, being in nausea at that moment. And then mm. you know, he had his own bands after that. I got mm. going back to records. Yeah. But, uh, uh, you know, Neil really wasn't on anything but that that way it is company there's a there's some stuff where he ended up like a, this is a bootleg i think oh yeah yeah and i think neil's on there and oh. al who replaced him from misery nice oh. guy too he was really nice you know and uh but we, there was this big Oi poloi was coming over to, to north america for the first time and everybody wanted to see Oi poloi right but they were oh. playing in ottawa canada which is like you know I want to say about a six or seven hour drive from New York city up to, uh, and over the border, you didn't need a passport back then. And, uh, to cross the border into Canada and, uh, you just had to have ID. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so 
uh, we everybody everybody in New York's like, oi poi, we gotta go up to Ottawa and to this festival and see oi poi. Well, and Nausea was gonna play with them, and they're like, all right, you know, let's just all go up there, you know, we, you know, and uh, so we got there, and you know, it was in a youth hall. Shows were a bit different in Canada than they were in New York City, and uh, it was in a youth center and this and that, but. You know, there was good guys up there and we hung out. We had a great time and uh, we met people from all over Canada. And uh, but, you know, there was there was some clutch moments in, in putting things together. Yeah. And I yeah. and uh, I jumped in and just helped. And then at the end, I remember that weekend when it was breaking down and everybody was going home back to the States. And, you know, the whole festival was over. I remember uh, John Guzman and uh, and Al from Nausea came up to me and like, hey, we need a roadie. We like the way you roll, man. You, you keep your shit together. You keep moving. You know, it's like, and and uh, would you would you consider being a roadie? You wanna wanna do a California jaunt with us? And so I went I went and did uh, West Coast with them, hmm. and uh, you know, I met a whole bunch of new people out there. I'd already been out to California and stuff, but uh, but going with a band, you know, Ooh. it's a different level. And uh, so uh, the night the night before. Um, now nausea was living with af in staten island then and wow. uh so roger was going to give us a lift to the airport in the morning and so we, we you know we were all assembling together for the night before having drinks in manhattan and stuff and and uh and and so uh i, I remember everybody kind of went home and it was just me and al we had a, you have to catch a boat to get out to the island you know it's on the south part of new york city and uh so you know it, it was like really late and I remember it was just me and Al and the and New York was in bad shape then. Mm. And uh, there was a lot of homeless living in the Staten Island ferry terminal. And uh, and we were drunk and all this stuff. But some tangle happened and we got attacked by these homeless people. Uh -huh. And and they almost stabbed Al in the throat. And the Coast Guard came out and was helping us. It was really <laughs> weird. And and the police came and we're like, they were press charges. And we're like, no, because you know, you know, we, we got to catch a plane, you know, we were already late. Now we're staying there with the police after this big fight. And Al had a big black eye and bruises all across his throat. This lady tried to stab him in the throat with a broken bottle. I remember seeing it. Wow. And, and uh, so we, we get out to Staten Island. We were just, we thought people were going to attack us on the boat and throw us in the Harbor going down to Staten Island. That's how bad it was. You know, me and Al were staying at the center of the boat. <laughs> we weren't going out by the rail. <laughs> and, uh, and so, so uh, we get out to Staten Island and, and, you know, we just stayed awake, you know, it's like, well, I'll just sleep when we get to the airport, yeah. you know, and then, you know, and it, so Roger woke up and he was, I could tell he was like one eye open, like you guys suck, <laughs> you know, like, you, I hate you guys making you get up this early. And, uh, and, and we, and I remember like, so it was like, a, but you know, we went from all that dank, cold fighting mm -hmm. New York city stuff to several hours later, like being in Los Angeles mm -hmm. at this guy's house. And he had an orange tree in his backyard and we were just like looking at it like it's an orange tree <laughs> but we met all those guys from like glycine max oh yeah yeah Rock, that's when i met reagan and it was a crazy mm -hmm. tour up west so many good shows um and you know all the way up to seattle you know bay area was fun and and uh, and i remember this one kid i said when i was in sf a couple years before that i said oh nausea will come out here sooner or later and he didn't believe me and i've ever seen that kid outside the show he goes i didn't believe you when you told me nausea was gonna come to the west coast and i was like here they are and i'm with them <laughs> you know it's like but uh um just a lot of shenanigans and on the way back uh Ra reagan and i got stopped by the uh we were in northern california heading to la so i, I had to return a rental vehicle and uh so it was the middle of the night back then Reagan had like five Mohawks and, you know, like, you know, and we were in Northern California, like Redwood country. And, uh, and, and, you know, he smoked close cigarettes. So he smelled like a big baked ham and, and, uh, and, and, uh, and these, I didn't, unbeknownst to me, he had a warrant out for his arrest in the state of California. And there was a bunch of, and somebody called the cops on us for some reason. And they said, we didn't look like the guys who should be driving a brand new car. It's like, well, it's a rental car. Here's the agreement, you know? And, and they, they said, well, your friend has a, a warrant. 
mm. and we're going to take them. But I, I had, I remember I had only about $300 in cash on me yeah. and that's how much it cost to bail them out. <laughs> 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 so I had to bail them out with that. That was it. Best buddies for life. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, oh, you bailed me out. You didn't leave me in jail. <laughs> I always liked how like Vic, Victor went on to be in Chaos UK. Is that how you met like Chaos UK? Uh, yes. Yeah. And, uh, um, but uh, that, well, it's funny, you know, like uh, touring in Europe with nausea and stuff, mm. you know, we made all kinds of new friends there mm -hmm. from all over the place. And one of the bands that I, I was going to allude to that, um, one of the bands that um, who was coming over and visiting mm was uh suicidal supermarket trolley oh yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. uh and they became great friends of ours they're still friends of mine to this day that's their first seven inch nice yeah um yeah. and uh and they're 12 inch yeah but uh they really showed us the ropes around london mm. and uh you know i'd been to england before but like mm. they you know they, they come to new york we showed them around new york yeah. and vice versa and it was starting to build up and vic was also good friends with uh, Public Nuisance back in New York. Okay. Yeah. And and um, but I just oh, oh here's the thing with mm. with Vic. I remember towards the end of Nausea Tour, you could tell the band project was starting to wane, getting that lifeboat mentality. <laughs> you know, like I need you to survive huh. stuff in the van. You know, mm. and and the band really fell apart at the end of that European tour mm. in '91. Mm. It came back and did some more gigs in New York, but that was about it. And and uh, and and. Uh, but uh, but I remember there was a band fight and as a roadie, I kind of stand back, you know, uh -huh. I'm not directly involved. You know, this is your band. You know, you got to know your role. Uh -huh. You don't stick your nose in where it doesn't belong. And, and I remember there was fighting amongst them, quarreling and 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 me and Vic, everybody stormed out of the van. But me and Vic were sitting in the van and he had a boombox sitting on his lap and he put in the uh, chirping Sodbury bonfire tape. And I remember and he, and he put it in. He goes. This is this the coolest album ever? And he goes, what? He goes, I love this record. He goes, does it sound like they have fights in the van? And I'm thinking, I said, probably. Oh, you know, I don't yeah. know them, but but uh, probably. And, and he goes, he goes, I, I I remember he said it. He goes, I would love to be in Chaos UK. <laughs> I remember he said that. It was like one of the last days of the nausea tour. But then we when we all came back to New York, I remember, uh, uh, I guess, uh, Gaba mm. had gone to the West Coast. To hang out with Poison Idea okay. or something. This was like 30 years ago. Yeah. Um, and he came to New York on his way back to England, and he was outside of the ABC Do Rio. And I didn't, you know, I would, I would have walked right by him. You know, I would only know him from pictures on the records. You yeah. know, his charged <laughs> hair and everything. And but, it, and so I'm talking to him, and he goes, it, he, he was just wearing jeans and a flannel shirt and sneakers, uh, uh. and he had his backpack on. And he goes. I'm Gabba from Chaos UK. I was like, fuck you, you are. Anybody could say that. And then it proved that he was, and I felt like a jerk. But I was just like, fuck you. You're not Gabba. I was like, go on, because you're English. You want to hang out with punks? So I was like, fuck you. I was like, I gave him a hard time because I was like, you're not Gabba. Then it was. It was really Gabba. I was like, <laughs> but, uh, um, but, uh, but then I remember then Vic kind of made friends mm. with him and went back to England with him or met bat and back and then yeah. that was it i heard that he was in cash uk and i was like but then gaba told me this story years later he said he goes he came back he goes he told chaos he goes hey i gotta do i want to bring a new guitar player in the band and he goes he goes ah oh. he goes he's american and he goes oh no and he goes he oh he was in reagan youth and nausea he goes when's he start <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny though because when vic joined they kind of changed their sound to that like more old school like punk yeah style, right yeah yeah it, it also like those those high leads you know mm -hmm. like vic's great you know yeah. and now he's vic's in a surf band now you know really? he's more low-key i yeah. think he, he's a, he's an illustrator and mm. uh because i knew he had an ex-girlfriend i gave him a drawing board from i work in an architecture firm mm. so uh i gave him like drawing boards and stuff and and he's like yeah i do illustration yeah. and this and that but i lost touch with him a little bit then i found him again and he was playing in this surf band mm. And they do, or they were, I don't know what they're doing now, but uh, what the hell is the name of it? But they were very good and really well respected in that scene. Mm. And and he was doing like soundtracks for TV shows that couldn't afford to buy, like license the music. So he would just write them parts for their stuff. And he was making money doing that. Wow. You know? was like, 
And then uh, go back a little bit. Mm. After K- Vic got bounced out of, by the British government, mm. out of, he got uh, deported. What's the word? Deported. Thank yeah. you. Um, uh, he got deported. And I remember I was, this was like 95. And I took my wife to Europe and she'd never been to Amsterdam or anything before. And, and so we, um, and I was taking her to Berlin. And uh, uh, so we're walking around in Amsterdam, like day one, and I see Vic busking on the street <laughs> with an acoustic guitar. And he said, what happened? He told me, oh, I got deported. I'm out. I can't go back to England. I got, I'm trying to find some money to get back to New York. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it was just so random to like, I had no idea. And then he took me to this squat called the Broken Chain. It was across the canal from the mm-hmm. Anne Frank house. And, and it was a punk squat. And we went there and it was like, Gilder a beer, you know, it was like, all right. And uh, so... We, we, it had a bar, you know, European style hotel, you know, the yeah. bars downstairs, you know, but it was, something was wrong. It was like abandoned or something. So these punks took it over. And then I figured out what it was. Like the top two floors were burned. I went, okay. I went, exploded there. It was like a fire. So we heard all this rave music in the back of the building, like loud. I mean, like you could feel it in your stomach. Oh. And, and, and it said, there was these signs, rave, rave with arrows, rave, rave. So we go down there and we look and we can see these lights coming out of this doorway. We go in there. There was one guy in there. And he was passed out on the floor. It was, it was just such a cartoon. <laughs> it was a good time. Yeah, man. Uh, so yeah. the other people in England that did us right mm. was Coitus. Like Skinny and those guys. And, and Mick. Mick. Uh, I'm still in, fantastic people. Still I'm still in touch with Mick. He comes to Japan every now and again. Yeah, he, I think he married a Japanese woman. It, yeah. And, uh, and, uh, but yeah, we just, we, my band, uh, played with, uh, Coit, one of the last Coitus gigs in Ireland in end of 19. We played the benefit or the skinny tribute. Okay. We flew yeah, over okay. just that. We could get cheap flights to Ireland out of here. So I was like, ah, we should go and do that. We, and we, I asked Mick, I said, did you throw us out there? <laughs> <He's>, sure. <laughs> it's like, yeah. and we, it was like my my band was happy, We're like because two of them can't get into Canada, but they can get into Ireland. Go figure. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy should tell us everyone the name of the band that was playing. Oh, my band now is called Chemtrails. But up, up that the Coitus Skinny tribute was Chemtrails yeah. too. Yeah, it was Chemtrails. Oh, okay. okay, I play. I also played in a band uh, called Broken for a lot of years. Okay, I know that band. Yeah, uh, yeah, and. Uh, uh, it was with some revolving members. Like when we first started, it was some of the members of the Pissed, Ooh. and because uh, they were all from the same area, mm. and uh, and and uh, that was after Malachi Crunch. I did that for like twenty years. But mm. like Bill from the Pissed played in like a million bands. Like React, he played in um, uh, Mankind. Is this um, Bill Chamberlain? We're talking yeah, about. Bill. Yeah, yeah, Bill. I was I was actually going to allude to that too mm. because um, I did a lot of stuff. And, and, and there's a big connection between Bill and the Pittsburgh scene mm. and everything too. But yeah, the Pists are like great. You know, this, this is like Connecticut legend band that LP like, is of the nineties, you know, like yeah. this, you know, really tight, great lyrics. Yeah. All the guys are super great. And then, uh, like I said, Osrot and like all that crew, right. fantastic people. I toured with them in Europe in 97 and, um, uh, just great people behind enemy lines. We, I went down to uh, Latin America with behind enemy lines. Some of oh. the best gigs I ever saw, like in, Me- in Mexico City and at the El Basura, uh, Toluca Mosh. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Mexico is awesome. It, 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 you know, I met a lot of good people. Uh, um, uh, the Atoxico people. Oh, God, what about? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, like, I got sucked right in. Like, there's a guy down there, Salinas, his wife was in Atoxico and Broken went down there. We played some gigs down there. It was like a door opened, you know. It was just like, boy. And then when 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 I met all these people, this this is like about fifteen years ago. Mm. They you know they said, "What do you know about Mexico City?" I said everything I knew, and they're like, "You know it all." <laughs> <laughs> it was like, and so it was just like, yeah. I said I know about the earthquake in '86 and all this stuff, and they were just like, "Oh yeah, yeah." They're like a massacre '68. We stayed right near the stadium where that happened, and you know, you know, was, you know. So they were like, they appreciated the gringos know what's going on, and and uh, but I've also been called like I still go down there. I was down there a couple years ago. Mm. Uh, Chemtrails played down there, mm. and. Uh, I heard this guy, a friend of mine, Jose, he goes, some guys were asking, like, I could hear it, my, my minimal Spanish. They would say, who is that guy, this and that? 
And he goes, hey, it's Cardinal, Jim Martin, you know, don't fuck with that guy. You know, it's like, you know, it's like, you know, like, cause I would help them in a second up here, you know, it's like, but you know, there's a lot of immigration problems here. So with, with, with Latin America, especially after Trump. So, you know, well, we played when we played in, uh, 18, uh, you know, we, I, I said, I knew it was going to be bad when they said we were from America and we hit the stage and like some of these pu- young pu- drunk oh. punks be like, Americans. I was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> and it, we, we made it through. <laughs> here we go. It was like, you know, because, you know, this guy comes out and tells them they're all fucking rapists and murderers. Give me a fucking break. I'd be pissed too. <laughs> right. yeah. um, Mexican oh. hardcore is like, can... oh, it's, it's, and some of the more modern stuff, like, um, that I'm I'm jumping ahead. Oh no problem. Uh, but uh, uh, you know I go to Montreal a lot. Montreal scene's really good. But so a lot of those Mexican bands can go to Canada, cool. but they have to go over America. They can't even stop here. And I help uh, Janet Landley. Oh. Landley. she's like my sister. I was going to um, ask you about that. Chief. So cool. Yeah, cool. yeah. She's yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I have like after the bomb stuff and stuff in mm. here. Um, but uh, she she ran the catacombs with you know the very strong scene in montreal yeah. a lot of strong women organizers mm. you know much respect like so much work they did up there i i saw her like i'd be up there on vacation and getting drunk with my friends and she was going off to city hall to have a meeting to get permits and you know it's just like you know sorry <laughs> wow. that's but, like uh, an amazing place it's closed down though right Closed yeah, down. it's closed down, but you know, with the pandemic, mm. nothing's really rebirthed, you know. Right. And and it and you know, it, you know, they're infected just like everybody else. Right. So um, but uh, you know, the scene sitting dormant, a lot of great bands up there. It, it's kind of funny though, there's like a shelf life of Montreal bands, like three, four years, and then they're done. Oh. <laughs> you know, you never hear from them again, mm. but then they'll morph together and start another band like proxy oh, or no. uh, or uh uh, my French is terrible. De Do you ever hear mm-hmm. that band? De Cours. Mm-hmm. And then, um, Born Dead Icons. Were they a Montreal band or a Quebec band? Who's that? Born Dead Icons. Were they a? Montreal yeah, band? they were really good. Yeah. 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 This is uh, De Cours. Oh, that's one I don't know. Yeah. But I think oh. they're broken up already. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> but these guys, they're from Nova Scotia, but they became Montreal creatures. You know? They came to Japan, I think. Yeah, ago. probably. Yeah. And uh, really awesome guys, really good guys. I've been with them in other countries rolling around. Wow. Fucking fantastic people. Um uh but uh with but going back to the Latino bands, we brought mm. uh Los Manjo up there. I've got I, one of those seven inches, it's amazing. Yeah. Oh, really good stuff. Get the album. You can probably oh, find it. Oh. But uh it, uh but uh Los Manjo um i remember i was driving them over from where they were staying you know uh, montreal punks are very you know leather spiky punks you know like you know like they're you know they got a lot of fashion and los monjo not really they're like t-shirt and jeans band you know and uh and on the way over there they were at they were nervous because they were the headliner and 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 they asked me they said nobody likes it will they like us i was like you wouldn't have got asked to come here if they didn't want to hear you play, you know? Uh, and and it, the place erupted when they played. It was so good. So, yeah. You know? It was so Amazing. good. I wish they could have played New York, you know? Oh. So many bands missed because of stupid immigration laws, you know? And, but, like, uh, have you heard, uh, uh, I, I want to say it correctly, Kid uh, Naxo means chain in Spanish. No. They're a good next band. Terzo yeah. Mundo. You ever oh. heard Terzo Mundo? Terzo Mundo is really good. Um, I think they're gone already, but oh. that was a really strong band. A lot of good new strong bands. There was a seven got the last Sistema de Fellas, something like that. Oh yeah, I I know I know what you mean. They had a twelve inch too. Mm, that's yeah, pretty good good band. Yeah, that's good yeah. stuff. That that's even that's like ten years old. Right, right. I like, for me it's yeah. like a new new band. Going, but it's like, yeah, it's fucking. 10. And going back to Reagan, he mm. was in that like uh, uh, Latino band uh, Dogma Mundista. Oh. Oh yeah, 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 excellent, excellent. I, that's one of my all-time favorite records. I got the CD sitting right over here. <laughs> ah! Oh, it's a classic. There's two copies of the LP sat in different record shops in Osaka right now, and I should get it right. Yes, because it's unless it got repressed, it, it a lot of people are looking for that, and I think it's all getting right. inflated. I'll buy it. Yeah, and it, it also has this sound. It's like it's like uh, 
uh, you know, it has like elements of final conflict. You can hear the West Coast and mm -hmm. the Mexican sound like merged. Wow. And uh, the singer was in uh, 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 Solution Mortal. Really? Classic Mexican, man. Ooh. Yeah. Ah, I'm learning a lot. Uh, I'm learning a lot. I'm going to buy that. Yeah. I've been, it's been sat there for ages in two different stores. Right? I'm surprised. I. Uh, you might want to cut this yeah, bit yeah, out. I'm not so going to upload know. this until I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, that's a classic. I, uh, and and uh, I, it's always a go-to for me. That record, I love that record. You know, it came out early '90s. Mm, yeah. But uh, one of and the other one of the members is also he's from, he played in Filth as well. Oh, okay. So it's like this West Coast Mexican craziness. Mm, yeah. You know? It's a very good punk record. Uh, uh. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I listen to a lot of that kind of stuff. So, Jim, where are, where are we in the story? Are we ready to talk about Vex Records yet? Are we about... um, sure. I don't have any of those releases. I didn't pull them. Well, I, <laughs> by chance, I have the Vex record sticker on my, yep. one of my seven inch. I mean, I've got. Couple of thank you for your continued support oh you're welcome i guess like from this record yeah, that came out about 10 years ago yeah i like yeah the, you've got the Excellent myspace guy. the myspace like address on the back try pronouncing that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. but those those guys are really nice too um mm. kettle and, and tarie mm. and stian has a connection to montreal he was in after the bombs really um, wow. yeah but he moved back to oslo he lived in montreal All for right. years but he, he moved back to Oslo cool. and uh, I caught them over in Oslo too, but they, they played uh, in Canada. They came over, mm -hmm. but, uh, um, but uh, we started off, it was to start off to help. We started Vex really to, to throw in me and a friend just threw money in on the first after the bombs LP. Okay. And, and we didn't really get the credit for it, but then that, that was it. You know, it's like, not, not that we were looking for the credit, but I mean, like it didn't say Vex on it, mm, you know, mm, mm, and, and, and it, but it was more like, here's our money, put that record out, mm, you know? Mm. And, and, uh, and then after that, my, my friend and I, Matt Sachs, who is, he's from Connecticut. He was in behind enemy lines mm. and parasitic. Mm. And uh, he, he moved to Virginia. But uh, after that, we we're like, well, let's put out more records. <laughs> and we did, and we pounded out. I, I stopped for a few years. We I did cassette and those stuff because mm. of money issues. But uh, but uh, I came back. I'm I'm working on something new now. Oh. I'm gonna go. I've gone back to vinyl because I haven't been traveling and spending money that way mm. with the pandemic. Mm. So I feel that it's time to go back to vinyl. Yeah. And I'm I'm working with this band in New York. It's a Brazilian band. Ooh. They're all Brazilian immigrants in New York. They're punks from Sao Paulo. Mm. But they have a Colombian singer, a female singer. And they're called Cartel with a K. And uh and on the it's a split seven inch. The other side is uh Odio Social from, mm. from Brazil. Yeah. And um and it's it's really good stuff. I, I, I they said it to me a, a, a common friend of ours who's a Brazilian folk who lives near me he said Hey, this guy Mario, he needs some help. Would you listen to it? Tell him what you think. And I I, I listened to it twice on my headphones. I went, oh, tell him I'll put it out. <laughs> I, like, oh. I think it's time to get back to vinyl. You know, Is like, that gonna come out this year, do you think? Yes, it will. i oh. I've actually I'm filling out the the forms now. And uh I'll probably have a you know like a YouTube promo clip for it. But uh but Great. uh um you know, other things we did, we did the last DSB one, uh, useless system abuse, mm, yeah. uh, 12 inch. Uh, what are other ones? This we is did? one I like. Uh, this, uh, uh, Coaxion Coaxion. from Mexico. Yeah. They're from Tijuana. I actually, we met them on tour and became like instant friends and, uh, they're really good guys. They're from Tijuana. Good uh, Tijuana was it? Uh, satanic crusty mafia guys. <laughs> 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 they're, they're really nice guys. Uh, uh, Manuel, yeah. he's, he's the best. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, like I said, you know, mm. I, I knew we, in our pre discussion, uh, mm. you know, I never expect to make the money all the way back. If I broke even, it's a mm. good day, you know, oh. but, uh, it, you know, but, you know, if you're doing a thousand copies of something, I look at it more as art. And it's sometimes when you go to the bigger distributors, they ask you here in America, they ask you for your tax ID. And I laugh. <laughs> I said, listen, if the IRS comes after me, all I could show them is loss, you know, because I'm not making it back. I'm just spending it. So, 
you know, it's to me, it's like a, an art calling card, right. you know, yeah. you know, so make a nice little package, do mm. it right. You know, if it warrants a repress, you do it then, you know, yeah. if, it, if it's in that much in demand. And, uh, um, but, uh, you know, I did a bunch of clips over the years too on YouTube. There's a whole bunch of Vex clips, mm. but, uh, uh, messing around with my Mac, but, uh, uh, but it, and I filmed a lot too. We didn't talk about that. Oh, I did. I, I, I made, I don't know if you're familiar with it. I did it for tribal war. I was filming a lot of bands in New York city, like in the mm-hmm. early nineties, mid nineties and, uh, in and, and Connecticut, New York, some Boston shows and, uh, uh, nobody else was filming. That's why I did it. Mm. You know, I was like, I don't see anybody else with a camera, you know, look at all these great bands. Mm-hmm. Nobody's standing around with a camera uh-huh. doing this. So, uh, Neil from tribal war was over at my house. And I was showing some of the videos. He goes, and he just looked at me and he said, could you, could you edit that up a bit and I'll release it on tribal war? And I was like, sure. And I, I, you know, this is before the internet. And, and I always get really good compliments. They were called East coast pogo attacks. Oh, volume okay. one, volume two. And it was on VHS. Some of them have been diced up and split around on mm. YouTube, you mm. know, but, uh, I owe anytime somebody finds out that I did that, they're always like, oh man, when we were kids, like in nowhere, Ohio, we got that tape. Like, you know, it was like everything, you know, oh. like, you know, it was like, you know, we saw how punks dressed. We saw this, we saw that. I was like, well, you know, I just remember when I was younger, I, we used to really like those uh, target videos. Yeah. You know? yeah. And that, that was my cue. It was like those, t- those target videos were awesome. You know, it was just like for a kid that, you know, never saw millions of dead cops before, you yeah. know, you got a videotape of it. I remember like in the, you know, early to mid eighties getting that kind of thing. And you'd be like, Holy shit. Yeah. You know? like, this and is that really was the good. crucifix one too, right? Oh yeah. It's the crucifix millions of dead cops. There's yeah. a really good Avengers one. I'm, there's a sick pleasure one. You know, there's like, maybe, maybe GBH. Yeah. yeah uh, maybe? not on target, but okay. they have like black flag. All right. Uh, um, but like, you know, on the East Coast, we didn't have anything like that. So mm-hmm. when you saw that, it was just like crazy good, you know? Yeah. So, or you mince things in it, you know, like you chop some stuff in there and make it relevant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but, uh, but it, you know, that, you know, oh, we have a bit in there with uh, some morgue footage. So a friend of ours got us into the medical school at Yale and uh, the cadaver storage unit. And we took some video down there. We spliced that in. It was, it was like... <laughs> You know, I thought it was going to be this pristine laboratory. And it looked like a medieval dungeon. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, wow. And and there was like bodies floating in vats of her formaldehyde tethered to these poles. And, you know, then there was the leathered out old men who donated their bodies to science piled up on these like slabs, you know. And then there was like, the, because it was med school, there was oh. a, a, a corner with a pile of arms and plastic bags, heads and plastic bags, knees, you know, legs, feet, you know, everything so they could dissect it. Yeah. And, take mm-hmm. it. and then on the way home, my wife and I, she was with me on the way home in the, in the car. Mm-hmm. We It wasn't the corpses that freaked us out so much as the, the smell of formaldehyde in our clothes was so gross, we barfed. <laughs> <laughs> it, was like, it was like in the car, we were like... <laughs> Fuck. Let's see. Oh, and I was, mm. I was going to tell you. I don't know where you want to go. But like, come on. Finds on tour, like legend finds. Come on, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, 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 let's see. Here's here's one. This is a legend find. Now, granted, this was like late '80s. I was in California, mm. and like everybody was dumping their world hardcore. Like you know, like uh. I couldn't believe it. I was trolling the stores, like in San Francisco, and I was finding like crazy stuff for like cheap i was like Uh, stuff you'd never see on the east coast and and you know i read about it and this mm. and that but like but here's here's this one's legend i think i got this for like six dollars that's like super super legend yeah you know Uh, and i remember like hearing this on like mystic comps like in the early 80s i hate cops and all Mm. that stuff this this is a really good punk record (laughs) fantastic Uh, and and then um I went to one record store and saw Thera of Ooh. Crucifix was working in the record store. I recognized him. And he looked at me and saw what I was looking at. And he goes, you want the box? <laughs> and I was like, and he gave me the box. But he, he sold me these, these records for so fucking cheap. And I don't even think it was like a mates rate. It was just that's how much it cost, uh-huh. you know? Uh-huh. And, uh, th- and people tell me, you, you got that for how much? And I was like, six bucks. Devoris Half from oh, Finland. Oh, Jesus. 
I know people will tell me you have that, you know, and I was like, yeah, I have that. I've had it for years. You know, it's like, <laughs> like even like the reissue of that is like not cheap. Six bucks. So Theorist sold me this fucking thing. <laughs> um, another one. These are a bit more common than mm. that, but they were hard to find on the East Coast. Like at the time, and this is the original one, the the Yugoslavian comp. That's killer. There's a there's a copy of that in a shop here as well right now. I should. Yeah, it's really really oh, good. UBR are amazing, and the other and, band, uh, the old girl band, maybe on that record. I forgot. I think so. Mm. It's, it's an excellent excellent record. Yeah. Um, and then this is a, a really good Brazilian comp. I've got that. It's yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Really good comp. Yeah. You, know, you know who's really good on this? Uh, who is it? Uh, oh shit! I'll think about it in a second. But uh, there's so many good songs on it. Yeah. Um, wait, oh, where is it? And then this. A friend of mine told me, my Brazilian friend told me, mm. this is the a, a first compilation, Brazilian punk compilation oh. ever. And uh, I got this one for 10 bucks in San Francisco. That's kind of a legendary one. Yeah. He yeah. said this is like the first, like, mm. uh, it's a compilation of the first punk festival. That's right. Yes. Yeah. In, yeah. in Brazil. Yeah. And he said, he said, and he, like, he, you know, this guy, I only met him like 20 years ago. I got this back in the 80s. And he said, and he came here. He goes, I never met a white guy that had that record. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, was like, so you know, him and I are really good friends because he goes, I met this guy, this punk here. He's a old punk. <laughs> you know, he's like, he tells his friends in Brazil. And then I went to the, mm. uh, I went. To the, I know this is this is a legend Japanese record, and I'm sure a, a lot of people know about it. Mm. I, it. It's it's pretty famous. But the story behind it is. I was in the epicenter zone, which used to be the maximum rock and roll yeah. record store. Mm. And I was talking about, I was talking about Japanese punk to somebody in there and how I was looking for some of it. And I, and I told him what I knew about it and stuff like this. And then Tim Yohannan was like kind of working in the background. I didn't really know him. Mm. I knew it was him though. And uh, he, he said, can I talk to you for a minute at the counter? And I was like, sure. He goes, you. And I was like, you know, what's your name? We met each other. And he goes, I'm Tim Yohannan. I was like, oh yeah, I know who you are. And he, and he goes, <laughs> He goes, I heard you talking over there. You need to have this record. And he and he sold me this. Oh, yes. yes like yes. 10 bucks. <laughs> Classic. Yeah. I mean, everybody knows this record, yeah. you know. But yeah. this this record is like stellar, you know. It's uh, just like bulletproof. Um, the, yeah. Guitarist Nauki, he passed away recently. I just, I heard yeah. about that. Yeah. yeah like I said, we're all getting old. Getting right? old. Yeah, man. That's a classic. Man. But uh uh, what else do I got here? I just got some stuff I wanted to show you, like newer bands that I like. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. And, uh, like, oh, there's the after the bomb stuff. Oh, another legend Montreal band, Inepsi, of course. All time you know, favorite. Great guys, great guys. Um, but there's a newer thrash band. I don't know if you're familiar with Mike Hillerson. He, mm. He's like in every cool band now in New York. It's like, how do you do that? <laughs> but he's not, he, he's in this band, Extended Hell. I've been. I've been seeing uh, their records but, around a little bit, and I was intrigued. I don't know anything about them. Pick it up; it's pretty good. Uh, but here's the thing: when Frampton came to Montreal to play uh, the the Varning Fest, mm. and they were headlining, Extended Hell got the slot right before them. And when they came off, I, I think they were so pumped that they were opening for Frampton. They were so excellent. I was like, I'd hate to be Frampton right now. <laughs> yeah, really, I was like, and Fra Frampton's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I was like, but I saw Frampton in Texas, and, and it was just blew my mind. But, but, uh, uh, but uh, this when they when they opened up for me, they were so, you know, <laughs> chuffed to be opening for Frampton. I was like, they, I was like, oh my god, how do you top that? They were so I never even saw them like that in New York. You know, it was like it was so that's, good. That's funny you mentioned Frampton because those records I was talking about, like the Dogma Mundista and that one. Or at Jackie Store? They're in Jackie. Yeah, they're in Jackie yeah. Store. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here's the other New York band I really like, but nothing's really happening in New York right now because the pandemic. Oh, so I've, got that. Right? I've got that. Yeah, yeah. Excellent yeah. Good record. They came they're to really too a few years ago. Yeah, they're nice guys. Mm. Um, and then here's another Hillerson band. Uh, <laughs> vaccine. It's like, oh, it's, okay. this is new. Mm. This is recent, but uh, this is really good. Mm. And um, let's see, that's a Montreal band. I, I don't know if you're familiar with any of the, the newer Colombian bands, but uh, mm. like there's a Final and um, 
uh, secta that like in the last recent years, I don't, some of them have broken up, but, uh, 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 but uh, some of them, I remember uh, Finale and Dead Hero came up and they toured the Northeast and then they went to Montreal and I think they were so taken with Montreal, they came back with a new band and a different sound and it was really killer. It was this band, Premier Regimen. Oh, I haven't got that. This, oh, this, this is the first evidence they have an LP too. Fucking awesome. This is, this is really good. The one excellent, that, people too. excellent people. The one Colombian band that you just reminded me of would be Muro, of course. Yeah, they, of course. They're they're really good. They're, they're talk of the town. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I've just gone down through everything. Excellent. Yeah, but uh, um, uh, you know, there's that's the other thing. You know, you, you know, people. Some people are like, oh, how do you have all these classics and and all this? And it's like. I would never pay like fifteen hundred dollars for a record. I think no. that's obnoxious. You know, no. it's like a repress will do me fine. Yeah. <laughs> but Same. you know, but because of my age and where I've been, you know, I ran into the stuff when not too many people knew that's about right. it or was yeah. at the gig. That's and it. and uh and so I tell some people like, you know, you gotta go for the low hanging fruit. Go look at this new band. Did you really like that band? Buy the record, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and buy the buy that stuff. Or I was traveling with some young friends in, in Europe and they were uh, we were in Sweden and they went to the record store. They were filling up, uh, they were filling their arms up full of records that you could buy in the States. And I said, don't do that. Why but if, I said, spend everything you, you're you not going to find home. Yeah. You know, it was like, you know, that's, that's another way to look at it. You know, you can get that at home. Why yeah. would you buy that here? <laughs> you got to carry it home. You can get it at home, <laughs> you know, but I'm enjoying uh, sort of picking up and finding new bands. I find that more exciting now than, you know, rebuying old classics that are going to cost yeah. me a month to wait. I prefer to spend my money on new new bands. I've got nothing at hand, but Toskos is a band I've been really getting into. Is that a Japanese band? It's a, uh, like a, from, they're from California, but like Spanish. Toskos. Oh, okay. One seven. Oh, I, I know who you're talking about. Oh, yeah. oh, oh I moved my records around. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> but, uh, that but, album, uh, I, I got that one seven. Ones where you, get, you get it and it's like, play it again, play it again, play it again. Yeah, yeah. Like, so good you know who else is really good like that was uh the and they, they've been around a little bit now i don't know if they're still around the creaturas yes yep, yep. from texas yeah uh, uh, there's there's one of their albums it's the one with the woman on the cover mm. you know like with the spiders yep. on her yeah um when i listen to that record i was like this is the this is the latino mm. comes record right I was, like, yeah, yeah. I was like i was like it's it's on the attack the whole fucking time there's so many of those bands and like paco is putting out all this like spanish stuff as well you know like uh, oh yeah 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 um we we, we played with uh or we saw irial they came here last mm. year um you know uh uh tete is really awesome mm. he was in destino final mm -hmm. and, yeah. and like those records in invasion <laughs> Those records are awesome, man. Like, you know, those are bulletproof records too. I was just yeah, like, oh yeah. my god, you know. And and I remember I had to get Belgrado at JFK right. to take him to Montreal for the Varning. That was like my assignment because that's how we do it. You know, it's like yeah. you get your assignment. It's cheaper for them to fly to New York than to fly to Montreal than to drive. And up. this one, it just I happen to have it. This is like my top recommendation for. I don't know that one. Minima. Where are they from? It's a Spanish band, I think. It's on SSR. Paco didn't do this one. This is like on, you know, it's like as good as that Toscos. It's yeah, yeah. Spanish female vocalist. Oh yeah. Minima. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. Like when I when I heard this band uh, Cartel from New York, there, there's another thing going on in New York right now, and I, and I don't think it's intentional. A few years ago, the Verrucas came through, mm. and you know everybody turns up for the Verrucas, mm. and. Uh, and it was at an odd place in Queens where there isn't really gigs. Mm. And uh, it looked like a biker clubhouse kind of thing. But it was, uh, they played, uh, well, God, what the hell is that? Uh, Resist, uh, Resistant Culture. Oh, okay, yeah. They were on tour with them or something. But then there was all these other Latino bands. And I'm like, I never heard of any of these bands. And they were all really good. And and, mm. uh, and some of them said, oh, yeah, we're from the Bronx. And this and that. I was like, why aren't we mixing it up? You know? I was like, you know, in... in it's like in New York City is that kind of a place, but yeah. you know, it just seemed like there was an invisible division. Like I don't think it's intentional. It just oh. I hasn't it cross pollinated yet. You know, it was just like you know, a, a gen Generation Suicida is another one good band. Yeah, that's that's L.A. I think. Okay. From LA. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and um, oh, there's so many. I love that kind of stuff. Oh, uh, <laughs> there was a there was a band. Uh, 
a few years ago, but I think they broke up. Oh, they are broken up. I know that for sure. Mm. I have this tour poster right next to me. Um, Mundo Muerto. Oh, okay. And Ooh, uh, nice. nice poster, huh? Yeah, Gussie. yeah. But they, they had the, I always said uh, on their records, when I listen to their records, the most epic pick slides ever. <laughs> like, like it's like, holy shit, what's going to happen now? <laughs> like, it's leading some of that. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, oh you know. Oh. I love that stuff, yeah. man. So it, there's there's so many great new bands. There's there's great there's great bands I haven't even heard yet. <laughs> right, me too. That's the way I look at things. I'm you actually, know? It's actually quite exciting because I it, it, sometimes you get a bit jaded, and I stop buying new records. But it's really exciting for me now to pick up all these new. Well, bands. it also depends, you know, your your life expenses too. Like, oh, yeah, I you know, things more. happen, and you no know, no records for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Jim, man, I, it's been so good talking with you. Yeah, cheers, man. Thanks for having me on. I've learned a lot. I've laughed a oh, lot. Right. I've drunk a lot. <laughs> I've I'm drunk a lot. I don't know. Do you have to work? What time is it there? Oh, it's like 2.30 in the afternoon. I've got the rest of the day uh, off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's yeah, 12, 12.40 here. All right. Um, I got to go to work in the morning, though. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> hey, I'm the boss. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks, Mike. Thank you very much. Cheers. Until next time, stay healthy, stay clean.